welcome to yet another episode of We Belong Presents Career Australia Season 2 where we talk to industry experts and professionals from various fields because here we are on a mission to decode and understand the current happenings with regards to opportunities for job seekers and students alike. On today's episode, I am super excited to be talking to someone who has been in the industry for more than 16 years. Now you know I'm going to be talking to an expert. Um, she is none other than Gunjan Malik from Aussies Group, one of the most trusted um, educational and migration consultants in the country. Thank you so much Gunjan for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks Sapna for having me in your show. I always say time is so valuable. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, I'm glad to be here and talking about the visas, the employer sponsored visa specifically totally. and uh, share my knowledge so I can be of help and some contribution to the students who are looking for advice. Some contribution, major contribution. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, Gunjan, you have uh, migrated to Australia in 2006, 2006 if I'm not yes. wrong yes, yes my research, research was right guys um so you've been here for more than 16 years and you came in um as as a migrant state nomination visa yeah, yeah. yeah. so i've done my studies back in delhi in india Beautiful. so i'm myself a migrant here i've been through that process of uh, skill assessment state yeah. nomination the pr pathways and citizenship so it's been a journey for myself yeah yeah um beautiful now tell me how was that journey uh, in short because I'm sure you would have had your struggle you would have had a journey that had a lot of ups and downs tell me how is that looking like for you well challenging and uh, especially when you're coming to a country where uh, it's new everything is new the culture the language obviously we, we, do, we are not from English speaking countries yeah. uh, back so but Australia is obviously a very welcoming country and it's a multicultural you can always go to different communities interact with them so I think it was challenging because uh, when you come here your main focus everybody comes here for the focus of permanent residency you now people come here for tourism and then they fall in love with the country the places and they look for different parts pathways, student visas, um, like other partner visas, there's so many options available right. for people uh, depending on their qualification and work experience. Right. So I think uh, we all who come here uh, have something to share in our journey and say my journey was very challenging. Yeah. I've done a couple of odd jobs as well like all students and migrants do and um, everything was a learning I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It was, definitely. It has been challenging no doubt. <laughs> and I kind of feel like when people take odd jobs they learn a new skill and every skill adds to the person that you grow up to be, right? Uh, lovely, lovely that you shared with me your journey in short. Um, but today we are talking about employer sponsored visa. On our show, we have spoken to experts on topics like temporary residence visa, um, graduate visa 485, uh, pathways to permanent residency and a lot of errors that people tend to make but today our episode is based on employer sponsored visa which is kind of a hot spot for people wanting to migrate to Australia um, so now I have absolutely no clue I uh, come from a background that is a lot of uh, media and uh, entertainment and all of that so visa is something that I'm still learning and there are so many out there who want to know more about employer sponsored visa just like me so tell me what is this employer sponsored visa so as the name itself suggests the employer sponsored you are sponsored by an employer Wow. It could be for temporary visa or permanent visa. So employer sponsored visas are categorized into three different categories as right. well. Right. So depending on the client's eligibility. Yeah. So as the name itself suggests, the employer sponsored visa, you have to be sponsored by an employer. Whether it's any uh, industry, whether it's uh, uh, hospitality, restaurants, IT industries, okay. um, engineering, manufacturing industries. So it's like an employer sponsored visa. Right. I will explain a bit about the um, employer sponsored visas to, to the audience as well. Please um, do. Yes. So the first um, uh, visa that usually people go for is the 482, which is the skill nominated visa. So the skill nominated visa is basically the employer is picking a migrant mm -hmm. who is skilled enough to be sponsored into their company. Oh, beautiful. Uh, that's right. So the reason, one of the main reasons, I'll be talking in a very, very common language. I will not go into too much uh, because otherwise then people get understand. confused as well. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so when an employer cannot find a local Australian resident yes. or citizen in the market, let's say I'll take examples mm. so it's easier mm. for people to understand. Mm. Uh, for example, if there is a system analyst or mm. a business analyst right. and uh, a person is already working in the company for six months and has got two, three years of experience. Mm. So there are particular skills that person has, mm. uh, Mr. A has, mm. that he cannot find in the local labor market. Mm. And that's where he thinks, okay, I want to sponsor this person and mm. I want him to work within my uh, company. For the will next they two, take three a TV years. presenter? Of course they will. <laughs> <laughs> so I always encourage people uh, to speak to the employers mm. and say that, okay, are you happy to sponsor me? Yeah. Because a lot of, uh, lot of times mm. the clients say when they come to me for consultations, yeah. um, if I do 10 consultations in a day, mm -hmm. 70 to 80 percent, they are very common questions. Yeah. Whether they are from different industry doesn't right. matter, but they are very common questions that I've got 3-4 years of experience, I'm working with the company as a system analyst and I'm not sure whether my company will be able to sponsor me. Yeah. So that's where I come into picture yeah. and say look, if you want I'm happy to speak to the employer as well Beautiful. because he or she will have a lot of questions which Definitely. obviously the applicant, I don't expect the applicant to, uh, to know Be anything. able to answer. Exactly. Yeah. So then the employer comes into picture, I explain to the applicant or do a conference call and say that okay, for example, uh, the training visa, yeah. um, which the word itself says training, Right. so that means it's opposite, let's say in common language it's opposite to the skilled hmm. uh, nominated visa, mm -hmm. so training visa you are hiring someone and sponsoring someone to train, Right. and um, the 4A to skill nominated visa, the skilled uh, temporary skill shortage visa, the employer is nominating and hiring a skilled person. Right. So for training visa, you need only 12 months of experience in mm -hmm. the last 24 months. Uh, for training visa? Training visa, 12 yes. 12 months of experience. 12 months of experience. That experience can be in the form of study as well. Oh, so, good. Yeah. So if you're a recent graduate, you yeah. completed your studies, uh, those 12 months duration in the last 24 months, then the company can sponsor you to train you. Training visa. Right. And right. then um, it comes the, the skill, the 4A2 skill shortage visa, you need um, minimum two years of experience, oh, okay. um, uh, full time. Yeah. And um, then for them to sponsor you for the 4A2. 4A2 can be for, they can sponsor you for two years, three years, four years, uh, depending on the skilled occupation list, that which uh, occupation falls under which stream. Oh, okay. so, so the department has divided the skilled occupation list into short term, medium term, regional. Right. So they've divided into different streams. Okay. Okay. So another common question I get from clients is that I don't understand that um, my occupation, why this falls under medium term. Yeah. And so it's just a, a terminology. People think, oh, my occupation is in medium term, so I'll just get my permanent residency. Mm. And if it's in a short term or ROL list, yeah. I, I think I'm not going to get my permanent residence, yeah, so that's not true. Okay. The only difference is that if your occupation is in a short term list, you have to be sponsored by the state. Okay. And um, you cannot apply for 189, which is the, the independent uh, visa, which yeah. is a skilled visa, which okay. I'm not going to be touch basing on yes. a lot. The main focus is the employer sponsored. So uh, the 407 training visa mm -hmm. is for training. Okay, so yeah. training visa is 407. Yes. Just like temporary residence visa is 485. Yes. Training visa is four, 407. 407. Right. All the 407 and 482, again, it goes into the sponsorship nomination yes. and visa. So yes. Whether that says employer sponsored visa, so the employer be, uh, should be approved as a sponsor. Okay. So yeah. that's the first step, basically. Great. Um, yeah. Great. Um, so. 407, 482 and there is a third category which is 186. Which is? 186. Employer sponsored. Which are employer sponsored. Great. And I'm going to be only talking about employer sponsored over here from now on. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Now that you've given us the background of how to go about uh, the 482, yeah. uh, it, it looks absolutely clear. Now that you've told me the first step, what are the steps to follow in mm -hmm. order to get to 482? Okay, you need to have an employer first of all. Okay. Check the eligibility. So let's say you have an employer yes. um, to sponsor you as a system analyst. I know mm -hmm. you're from media, TV, but there are occupations in your um, yeah. occupation as well. Uh, Hopefully, <laughs> my toes and fingers are crossed. You'll be fine. <laughs> yes, so let's say you're a system analyst and uh, you have an employer. The first step is to check the eligibility. So, so a lot of people say that my company just opened the business just two months ago, can they sponsor me? Yeah. I'm like yes or no both, but mm -hmm. there, there would, would be some challenges in between, some risks involved. Mm. Just an example, some company has been um, 
uh, established for the last 10 15 years yeah. so that's a part of the eligibility process has the company been going into loss how long they have been operating uh, <laughs> how many branches the company has how many entities so there are a lot of questions involved so first step is to check the eligibility of the okay sponsor. check the eligibility right. of the person who is sponsoring your yes. employer yes yeah so employer's eligibility comes into picture mm -hmm. And then uh, the second step uh, after that is the nomination. So the nomination in general, what it means is that um, how you fit into the company structure. Right. Uh, so let's say I go back to the same example of a system analyst. Uh, there's a small company of uh, 15 employees. Yeah. There are already five system analysts or business analysts working in the company. So the question arises that why your company needs another right uh, system analyst right why, why this company another example is at the bakery shop like yesterday yeah. I had a consultation for a baker mm -hmm. and there were four uh, bakers already working in the company yeah um, and that person had a nomination refusal from from oh, somewhere else from okay. outside yeah. so if I look at the organization chart I wouldn't have probably put that nomination through straight away by looking at it and saying that you already have four baker in the company why, why do you need do a you fifth want one? another one uh, it could be business expansion um, you're opening branches or the owner is not there and you, somebody has resigned so yeah. it, it could be a lot of things so nomination is a very critical stage mm. of the there's money involved of the employer and there's which of, we'll get into exactly yeah. so and which is non-refundable so mm. as well at the same time so it's, it's very important to put in the right application right. so the first step I would tell everyone to check the eligibility and uh, consult someone experienced who has been through that process who has done that process of the employer sponsored because they know the the challenges and um, uh, the what they would have faced in the right. refusals in the past right so it looks pretty straightforward when you go to the website and read about it but it's not that that straightforward yeah. people yeah. do miss few things totally yeah. um, which brings me to my next question what are the common mistakes or errors that these applicants tend to make when applying for something so specific and significant like employer sponsored visa I'll get on to the nomination part, yeah. um, this, which is the second step. Right. Um, sponsorship mistake, one or two mistakes people can do is that when they submit their profit and loss statement, the business activity statements to check the financial eligibility right. because the company needs to be approved as a sponsor. Right. The first thing is they may just not check the company has been going into loss. And then the question arises that if the company has been going into loss, how are they going to pay? Yeah, the employee in the next uh, one or two years right second if the business is virtually operating there's no actual office or it's a home office uh, that could be another reason that reason mm. so second step nomination I'll get into it in a bit of a detail because that's where a lot of mistakes happen if sure. the nomination gets refused then visa would get refused sure I was a little worried if I asked the next question earlier but I'm glad you're actually connecting it and it's, making it's a, sense of this. it's all step by step process mm. um, because like I said when I do consultations um, everyone has a different situation totally. so let's take an example of the same baker let's say because yeah. all the trade occupations like chef cook bakers pastry chef uh, welders motor mechanics uh, when you are dealing with a with a business which mm -hmm. deals in trade mm -hmm. it's very different to when you're dealing with the business for the nomination in uh, IT occupations or engineering or manufacturing industries yeah. so let's say an occupation of a baker mm -hmm. so in the nomination process mm -hmm. there's a one more thing uh, which is called the labor market testing okay. so as the 4A2 I suggested that the it is to hire someone who is skilled yeah. and not to jeopardize Australian residents and citizens so right. because basically they don't want migrants to take jobs of uh, residents and right, citizens here right, and sense. obviously they openly say that because it's, it's, it's no, their definitely. own country yeah. Makes sense. yeah so the labor market testing is designed by the Department of Home Affairs to check that the employer has done enough uh, research and they try to find someone local in the market first. right right so right. they can put the job advertisement through seek Ooh. job outlook indeed yeah. so you have tried uh, to find someone in the local labor market yeah, tried enough in order to exactly let tried yourself enough. know yes that that's the right you word. are probably not finding the right yes person. so tried enough that's yeah. that's where people go wrong they think okay let's put a job advertisement yeah for the purpose of nominating this person mm. and try not to recruit someone but that's wrong the case officer are very smart so I know how they think because I've been in the industry for so long yeah so I will probably know if I'm a case officer if I'm if I'm working on a case I think from the point of view of a case officer 
department. Uh, department. Great. So if you cannot convince me, yeah. then I cannot convince Definitely the person not. who's sitting on the assess the application. Totally. <laughs> so so one mistake, like uh, if I had a labor market testing, so it has to run for 28 days first of all. Okay. So the uh, day one. So sorry to cut you there. I just have a doubt. So labor market testing is basically you are putting the advertisement out. You are doing the research for finding the right person and you are coming to a conclusion that um, you are not finding the right person. Now here you refers to the employer who wants to sponsor. Right. Perfect, you got it right. So, <laughs> so uh, that's where people sometimes go wrong. That has to be done very accurately okay. because your application can be assessed or refused on that basis. Sure. Um, job Outlook, they introduced that it is a mandatory site, okay. government site okay. that the employer needs to advertise in 28 okay. days duration. Okay. So the first day and then the 28th day um, you need to have enough period and then you need to also supply to the department with the application that who applied and why you didn't select those employees. Right. It could right. be a lot of reasons. It's not that hard not to select someone honestly yeah. because someone you are looking for specific skills. Yeah. Someone doesn't want to relocate, people have applied, they don't want to relocate, someone is looking for only part-time job, casual job, they yeah. can't give a full-time commitment, there could totally. be a lot of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because there haven't been so many migrants in the last two, three years because of COVID, yeah. there are not enough migrants. So that's the reason why I'm talking about employer sponsor yeah. is if you're already working in an organization, right. Right. you make use of that opportunity. Mm. Uh, because it, the employer is helping you, but you are also as an applicant giving someone to the, something to the employer, definitely, a commitment definitely. For, the la for the next two, three years. Definitely. So that's one of the common mistakes uh, people do and yeah. it's, it's a lot, it's a very broad category. Yeah, uh, yeah. But these are the main things. So the first one is the thing that you need to check your eligibility. You need to see if your employer is ready and is able uh, or has the potential to actually sponsor you and the third one is of course the nomination process right now that we've spoken about errors we know that people coming to Australia from a different country especially from developing countries where most of us are from cost money is definitely a matter of concern um, Gunjan please help me through what is the basic cost um, in order to apply and what is like the whole structure for finances looking like when it comes to employers when it comes visa? to the training visa mm -hmm. it is a uh, less cost as compared to the um, the 482 and 186s training visa there's not much cost involved there is a training plan involved yeah uh, the three step again sponsorship nomination visa yeah uh, the cost are involved so a couple of hundred dollars uh, 310 for the nomination sponsorship and then visa it's like 420 dollars so the total will be thousand dollars or something so the total amount involved for employer sponsored visa 407 for all visa. the three only for only training visa only training about. Visa. Oh, yeah. only training visa yeah, that's no, not that less and then the second visa. step is 482 482 so you pay for the nomination mm -hmm. and then you pay for the visa okay. sponsorship nomination visa okay one thing i would like to make it clear is that the employer is responsible for the sponsorship and nomination cost the applicant does not pay it's not allowed basically why the reason is that um, the employer is the employer's application to the department right that i want to be approved so Definitely. it shouldn't be a money, um, the, the applicant shouldn't be paying money to the sponsor. Please make a note of this. Yeah. But do employers actually ask applicants to do it? Is, are, like, are there cases where and people that come happened? to me and uh, they have said, but it's not allowed. Yeah. It's not worth taking that risk. Right. And even if they are, I'm like, don't tell me because yeah. I'm not taking up that application. Definitely. That's the case. But yes, people are not aware of it. Mm. Once you make them aware. Yeah. And honestly, um, Sapna, a lot of companies have a budget to sponsor. Yeah, totally. And 99% of the companies that I have, I'm, yeah. I'm uh, working on the yeah. engineering firms, IT firms, they, yeah. have, they have a budget and they're happily Beautiful. sponsoring and they even pay the agent cost as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, they also need to pay the SEF levy. Okay. SAF levy cost. Okay. For 42 and 186, um, three thousand dollars and five thousand dollars, depending on which visa it is. But it can okay. go up to five thousand dollars. Okay. So um, 
not to confuse yeah. very straightforward is that the company pays for the nomination and sponsorship cost okay and the don't worry about it applicants your employer will pay for it no <laughs> they are obligated to pay because yeah. they are contributing for a development of yeah. a migrant definitely yeah. totally so just in order to put everything together thousand dollars for the first one training that visa. is training visa and then we have the the 482 482 it could be between 3 to 5000 3 to 5000 and then finally the 186 186 it can cost usually the same because same. there is three also the SAF levy uh, okay. involved in the great lovely now that you've given us like the basic financial structure for applying um employer sponsored visa um gunjan tell me how can a uh, educational consultant or a migration consultant help these applicants in order to avoid these errors because i'm sure just like you said even though uh, people go and read the website there are a lot of mistakes that they tend to commit yeah. and i have spoken to like experts in the previous episodes and they've always mentioned that one mistake can actually cost the applicant a lot in order to get back them on track when it comes to visas uh, do you agree to it uh, absolutely yeah because uh, when you put an application to the department yes it they are not obligated to request information usually when you lodge an application for 485 or I any mean the department request for um, the documents mm. in employee nomination visa the yeah. employee sponsored visa the case officer can take a decision directly so if they are not convinced that how do you think the position fits into the company structure if you have not provided enough documents totally the case officer can directly take a decision straight away um they cannot ask okay look i'm not convinced can you please provide more documents oh, yeah. it right. may happen it may not, not happen. happen so what we try to do is sorry again to cut right. you uh, i'll forget otherwise so does it also depend upon the case officer who's actually checking or you know who's actually going through your application it depends on the case officer whether they are convinced the applicant is uh, uh, genuine enough to right. fit into the company structure Beautiful. yeah um well if it's a friday and the case officer is pretty relaxed then you know maybe he may be in a good mood and then he can just approve it that doesn't work like that <laughs> yeah. doesn't work like that you need to actually go through it the right way right yeah exactly and uh, i think that with the what would what, uh, what was your no the question was again how yeah. can these educational and migration ah, consultants yes. help with them? exactly so we at Aussie's group um, we are a team of more than 35 to 40 migration agents yeah. and uh, Uh, we are sitting in different states as well we have a lot of branches yes. so perth adelaide canberra we have recently canberra. opened a new branch south australia beautiful queensland yeah just spread across the entire country please get in touch with them aussie's group is the place you have to go to <laughs> the reason is because i think um, uh, our founder and director mr dharmendra kumar patel an amazing person to work with i think he obviously his idea is so that we are approachable yeah to people if i'm living in south australia or if i'm living in victoria i would be aware like you know it's all about being aware and talking about experience so i am able to talk and advise based on my experience right even like all registered migration agents are providing the same service but what comes with experience is that i can tell with my experience what has been the pattern yeah of the department yeah. the rules are okay okay the july the state nomination is opening up in victoria yeah. everybody knows totally but obviously someone who's experienced we can tell by experience that yeah. what has been the pattern of south australia what has been the pattern of victoria western australia in the last couple of years and that's what clients wants to hear and you can actually guide them the right way right. perfect so every student who comes to me i'm glad that they have done their own research beautiful um and they say okay i've already looked best in australia is offering state nomination if i am have an employment mm. i said that's great you have to, because it's easier for us to explain and communicate so where we come into picture is that uh, it's about explaining to the client that he sh- or she should be clear yeah. what is the eligibility yeah if i'm asking for a document why i'm asking for a document yes sometimes i have clients coming in saying my employer is happy to sponsor me they'll just sign wherever you want yeah. i said okay that's great but no but i have no. to speak to the Definitely. employer because for sponsorship and nomination i'm representing him yeah so what we services we provide is um one is obviously we believe in uh, quality service 
uh, teamwork. We work as a team, and I think that's what is uh, made us specialize because we do trainings, um, with teams, live sessions, live sessions. Yeah. So to tell people about the eligibility there. Beautiful. So that's where we come into picture. Definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. Now that you've spoken so much about employer-sponsored visa, I'm sure there are so many people, you know, wanting to know more about it um, and wanting to actually find an employer, find a job that can actually bring them to Australia. Now, people who want to do it, please, please get in touch with Aussie's group. The beautiful lady out here with so many years of experience in the industry, guiding you the right way please get in touch with them um, and yeah thank you so much again for the time that you spent in order to actually explain us from the cost to the steps to absolutely everything thank you so much it's my pleasure and uh, i would obvi obviously encourage people to get in touch with us and uh, discuss your pathways discuss your eligibility criteria and especially even if you have completed your studies recently even if you have just landed yesterday it's good to plan ahead yeah i am very happy when clients come to me and say i've recently completed my studies i've launched my 485 visa i'm on a bridging visa a yeah. and now i want to discuss my pathways totally that's an excellent situation because i know now what to do what to plan yeah. for the client and when they come back to me after for the residencies and citizenship, you I actually, actually know their exactly. entire journey. Their journey, Beautiful. yeah. And uh, and uh, I think uh, Aussie's group specialises. Like I said, we believe in teamwork. Yeah. We believe in quality service, integrity. It's it's very important. Very That's good. what we have been. Uh, following for so many years like Oz is, uh, is there for last 50 You're the best of the best and that's the <laughs> reason you are sitting here and you know guiding so many out there thank you so much thank uh, you so Gunjan. much and all the very best with whatever you have ahead and hope to see you soon thank again you. on another, on another episode topic. very very soon um, so that was employer sponsored visa uh, and there is Gunjan Malik right here right at Aussie's group to help you um, I will catch up with another episode with another guest with another topic next week you take care until then this is Sapna signing off adios amigos <laughs>